Well, well, well. Those sneaky guys at Kubota. You see that on the mount? I thought this mirror mount was solid all the way through, but if you look really closely, you'll see there's a piece of Kubota gray tape over the top of it. It's hiding a pre-drilled hole, and that hole is exactly what I need, and it's exactly where I need it for today's project. Whew. Welcome back to GP Outdoors. Today we're going to start a project, which I should have done shortly after I got this LX2610. I'm a little behind, but we'll take care of it. You good folks know that I spent a lot of time off property with this LX2610, just like I did with my B2601. A lot of the roads around here, whether it's Husky Bob or Kirk or Bill or John or Ralph, they all live on what are called unassumed roads. That means the municipality doesn't look after them. The people that live there have to. And so when you have a chance to help people out, you see that I do. Whether it's grading or we've got a blow down and there's an elm across the road and you've got to block it up, get it off the road, or simply clearing snow in the winter, whether it's in the day or the night. I'm out on that concession road, or what you call a county road, six, eight, ten times a week. And I'm very fortunate to have such a large complement of first responders here on the GP Outdoors community. Whether you're law enforcement, police, paramedic, ambulance, fire, municipal or emergency response, you folks have given me a lot of good advice. And most recently, and over the last several months, you keep reminding me that these little wee hazard lights are just insufficient for traveling that concession road or doing work out on a private road when you can't be seen. Do you remember this little guy? It's what I bought for the open station B2601. Had a magnet on the bottom so you could mount it on the rocks and plug it into your 12 volt. But as you might recall, it's a pretty poor quality light. The magnet didn't work well, and you probably remember I ended up having to tie it to the ROPS to hold it on. In this two-part series, we're going to put an amber beacon on the LX2610. But it's not a temporary mount. It'll be a permanent mount. And given that we are going to permanently mount it to this cab, a cheap light off Amazon is not going to cut it this time. I'm going to need a good quality amber beacon. And I found one right here in Ontario, Canada, manufactured just outside Toronto. In part one today, I'm gonna show you how we build the mount and where we're gonna mount it on the tractor. I'll give you the highlights. And part two, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the beacon. Some of the information I found out when I was researching different types of beacons or hazard warning lights and what you might wanna know if you're considering one yourself. And of course, we're gonna mount the light, hook it up, make sure she's running. I might offer that if you spend 99.9% .9 of your time on your own property and you're very seldom ever on the roads or the county roads, you probably don't need a hazard beacon or any other type of safety gear. But if you're like me and you're running that tractor down the road constantly, especially on these windy, hilly concession roads, I might offer you one to consider it. So let's head on down the concession road. I'll see you over at Neighbor Guys. How thick? Well, one inch. Right? Right, quarter inch. So it's a quarter inch. Quarter inch thick, one inch wide. So um, I spent all this money. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why I should never go to, you know, to Canadian Tire or anywhere without you. One eighth. One eighth. One eighth. Okay. That looks like three quarter. Yep, three yeah. quarter and one. Yep. Yeah, so what you're saying is this is way too floppy to hold up that light because it's yeah. too bendy? Because it won't take much. Okay. Whereas, try that one. <laughs> if you bend it, <laughs> yeah. I'm very impressed. Okay. Because I guess the tractor's, <laughs> the tractor's going to be bouncing around like it always does, and especially the forest. So if I use this 1 8 stuff, it'll start, it'll to start bouncing around. This, this is just going to hold her firm, eh? Well, a lot, a lot more firm. Yeah, that's for oh, sure. that's great. And what would this came out of your steel bin again? <laughs> yeah, it was off um, a garage door opener, I think. Oh, okay. So it's the arm on the garage door opener that lifts. Yes, yeah, the adjustment. That's why the holes. Excellent. Guess I can take this back and get my money back. <laughs> yeah, but we have to restrain it <laughs> or keep it in the bin for the next project. We'll pick on something lighter next time. <laughs> okay, well, let's well, go let's, bender. Let's bender. 
Okay. If we use this hole, I don't. I want that extra part for leverage. Okay. Because it would fit snug there. Otherwise, it's coming down below it. Yeah. Because this way it'll come right flush with. I'll cut it off there. Okay. And we get rid of that. It's gonna have to bend. It's gonna bend through there. to get out around like that. Gotcha. And then basically we'll bend it here. We'll go out over here so it'll be mounted up about here. Yep, that's perfect, I think. Forward a little bit. Okay. So we have to bend it out an inch. Right. Then back vertical, and then horizontal. Okay. okay. Excellent. Thanks, guy. Let's try that one. Let's give her a whirl. Let's go where it's warm. <laughs> you bet. Coda. Are you going to help today, or are you just going to have fun in the snow? What? <laughs> so that's our first bend mark that you marked with the chalk? Yeah. And I that's just to get it out past the edge of past the cab? the cab. I may have gone a bit far on that one. I gotta get some of these projects out of here. Well, I was gonna say, she's got, <laughs> looks like you got a lot of stuff lined up for the winter and you haven't started them yet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Come off the bracket. Right. Should clear it. Now we may have to bend that down a bit more because it should be 90 degrees to there to be level with the top of the cab. And you got that. Hey, that's not bad. You know that? Yeah, it looks so pretty get good. that down to about 13 degrees. Yeah. Come out a little bit further because it's going to vibrate. Okay, right. Geez, that looks pretty good. How is it on it. the side? We're good. Yeah, lots of room. Right there. Okay. Yeah. Geez, yeah, that looks good, eh? I think we're there. So we just trim it to length. For you have a wait. Alrighty. All right, here we go. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it does fit. That, that should fit right down into that area. Okay, so we check her in. Yeah. That's a good snug fit. That is. Yeah. Well, it had before when you used it, it was the tape that was filling up the space around. Oh, okay. Good stuff. We're in good shape. Thanks. Before we go much further, I just wanted to do a little quick fit here to make sure we're in good shape before we do any more work to this bracket. As you folks can see, bending the bracket is a very scientific process. <laughs> and I think that's going to work out just perfect. Boy, I'll tell you, neighbor guy knows his stuff. Yeah, got about a good quarter inch or more clearance to the side of the top of the cab, which comes up over. Once we get her in place, that beacon light is going to come a little bit past the top of the roof, but I think that's okay, because generally speaking, this is going to be here anyways. That's great. Wow.
cut it off there and then we have to do angles because I can't swing that and tighten the mark. <laughs> How's it look? Mm, very close. Perfect. That's looking good? Yeah, I think so. Excellent. Nice. Excellent.
Kubota Gray. You get it at the dealership. Well, that certainly went a lot smoother than I anticipated it was going to. I gotta hand it to my neighbor guy. He's one smart fella. He keeps all of this old metal around, or old steel, and it always comes in handy for something. If you're making your own bracket, you definitely have to go with the quarter inch stuff. Don't use the one eighth stuff. It's just, it's not, it's too flimsy. This is nice and secure, and I think it's gonna hold that beacon just perfectly. I also wanted to send a little thank you and a shout out to one of our longtime subscribers, Mick, down in Colorado. I actually had some crazy, over the top, grandiose plans for how I was gonna mount this light until he was kind enough to send me some pictures of his LX2610 or 3310 and identified that little hole in the mirror mount. I then scooted down to my favorite dealership, B.E. Larkin, and I talked to Jimmy there, <laughs> a longtime mechanic, and he showed me how they mount their beacons for the municipalities and the counties. It all pulled it back together and turned what might have been a pretty overdone, overkill kind of a job into something very simple and practical and exactly what I needed. Let's get her painted up. We'll let her dry overnight and I'll see you again on the next video when we'll finish mounting and connecting the light up, test her out, see if she works. Thanks for sticking around today. I hope it was informative or at least entertaining. Have a wonderful week with your families. Please be kind to each other and I'll see you again right here on GP Outdoors. Cheers.